الرحمن الرحيم you don't have to nobody has to do anything everyone can do anything they want the murid in our way in our jamaat murid sahib sahib following if that murid is not understanding the importance of visiting the dargah the murid then should find out why it is important Uh, you can say this is why I'm posting the question to find out what is so important. Then I'm going to say to you why you're not knowing that it is important. Why is it important? Because the murid must be in the service of his sheikh if he wants to even consider himself to become a murid what is a murid that is not serving his shaykh what is a sahabi if that one is not following and serving the holy prophet you can serve him in different ways you can serve your shaykh in different ways you don't have to serve your shaykh for example there's so many people crying saying that I want to visit you what can I do I'm very far away from you so you can serve in different ways as you like i'm not going to give you any specific your heart has to open it has to follow but this like what chef and is saying the dargah it is a crazy house it is a mental house you're coming here to get cured to get fixed to get some medicine you cannot do that medicine outside especially if the shaykh is saying it is good for you to come and visit a little bit then there is something in it for you definitely and everyone who has come you know what it is for you personally what it is that is there because the dargah is not a regular place the definition of a dargah dargah it means the threshold the place that is in between the place that is let's let me say the doorstep we speak simple english eh? you didn't even you didn't come in yet to the house is just the doorstep but doorstep to where the derga it is a doorstep to divine presence if you are at the doorstep now you are going to be nearer to the divine presence and of course i don't mean that physically spiritually it is but how you are going to conduct yourself in the doorstep is going to determine if you are going to go in or not it's not just because if you are there so many people are the dargah their hearts may be very far away some people they come to the dargah for dunya reasons is not to enter to meet the divine presence some people come to see the sheikh they come to the dargah just so their car can get fixed business can become better the children can get married they can find a cure we are not saying that is wrong we are not saying that is bad but you are trading all these things for the divine presence then out of all of that there are only a few really sincere ones who is going to use the derga to train themselves to watch their ego to watch each other to be strong enough to get washed up to get rubbed against each other to be polished to be cut so that they are ready to enter into divine presence one time one of our brothers went somewhere and spoke to someone and that someone is saying oh you are coming from the dargah what kind of dargah it is and our brother say well this is what we do most of us we sleep at the darga we wake up we all pray fajr together after that we wait till ishraq then we go do our work 
some go to the barn, some go to the fields, some go do construction, some cleaning, some cooking, azan calling, some people stopping to pray inside the masjid, some pray where they are. Maghrib coming, everyone comes, they clean up, they pray Maghrib together, they eat together, they wait for Isha, they pray together, they make zikr every night together, they listen to suhbat together, and then they go to sleep. Then they wake up, they pray Fajr, and that person was saying, oh, this is a very old way. This is a very ancient way of doing it. This Dergah, they are doing it. Yes, where are they from? This is in America. America, are they doing this? Yes, top of a mountain. They found a mountain in America and people are doing this? Says yes. And most of them, they are young guys. Young guys in America? That they are doing this? Says mashallah to them. These kinds of things you cannot find everywhere. And this is continuous. I don't mean the Sheikh coming and then, oh, everywhere is filled up. The Sheikh going and then everything is... Sh no. Whether I'm here or I'm not, there's always a handful of people who are especially living here that they're continuing all of this. So this continues. So that is what a dergah is. There is a routine. There are duties to do. There is a way to doing it. There is a way to doing and watching and talking. You enter into a different world. You enter into a different air, different land. If you look with these eyes, you will know and you will see. You look with these eyes, you're not going to see nothing. With these eyes, shaitan does not understand and cannot see Adam as Khalifatullah. He sees him as a pile of dirty mud with his eyes. With his eyes, the angels see him as Khalifatullah. With his eyes, the angels, they see the light of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and they make sujud to that, sajda to that, willingly, obeying their Lord. And so, that is a place where you must learn so many different things. Everything is mixed together, flowing, organic. You know, today everyone is organic. We're doing organic. You don't have a class for fiqh. We don't have a class for uh, akidah. We don't have a class for tajweed. We don't have a class for this. We don't have a class for everything's together. Old style, you know. So with that, you will learn. When you look with these eyes, when you stop your ego from overtaking you, then you're going to pick up Akida, definitely. You're going to pick up how to recite things properly. You're going to pick up what is permissible and not permissible, what is more beautiful in doing things and what is not beautiful in doing things. You're going to pick up all of this without having to open a single book. And not only that, the knowledge that you're going to have, you're going to have to do it and to practice it every day. Inshallah, like I said, you don't have to come. Nobody has to come. But we are here and we're welcoming the whole world to come and to see how we live. We're not saying we are perfect. That's not the aim of a dergah, it's not for perfection. The aim of the dergah is for someone to come in leave the ego outside to come in knowing that there is an authority and to submit and to be with your brothers and your sisters and to help each other. It is not also to come into a derga and to say, I can do as I like. You cannot. Inshallah, we'll be able to carry this properly. This much is enough. al Fatiha. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.